You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. I have entitled this episode with part of a rhyme that helps you know things about the weather because I think of the planetary interactions as being sort of like our cosmic weather. And when I write my Janet's Planets or when I talk to you on Looking Up, it's sort of like your cosmic weather forecast. So you may be familiar with that old saying that says, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. So I called this red sky in the morning. And all you sailors out there, we're going to have some choppy waters in July and August. And that's why we're going to have our warning flag up for both months. Now, in the June episode, which I called Jumpy June, we did talk a little bit about the summer solstice and how a new moon happened just two, three days after the summer solstice on June 23rd. So actually, as July begins, we're still under the influence of that June new moon. The first thing that comes up in July, well, of course, our birthday, America's birthday on the 4th of July. And I'll um, weave some of that in as we're talking through some of these other uh, what astrologers call transits. That means the planets in motion, just kind of like the bus company has buses in motion, the transit company, the transits. And our first lunation, which means either a new moon, that's mostly what we use that word for, but also full moons, our first new or full moon of these two summer months. And I have to do two months in this show because we have rerun month in August. So don't tape a new show for that. But July 9th is going to be a full moon. And then we get a new moon July 23rd, a uh, eclipse full moon on August 7th, and an eclipse new moon on August 21st. And that's the big one everybody's waiting for. So we'll make sure to talk about that. So some of the factors that are in place as we're kind of leading up to eclipse month in August because um, August has heavier stuff going on than July does. But we have had Mars sort of running ahead of the sun from the spring, and the sun is like catching up to it. And this summer it will catch Mars. So when I look at sun and Mars at the July 9th full moon, the sun's about five degrees behind Mars. So we go to the July 23rd new moon, and that has the moon and sun always together at a new moon by definition. And they're only one, yeah, one degree away from Mars. So that's probably the most intense dose of Mars that we have going on. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. When we get to the August 7th eclipse full moon, the sun will then be four degrees past Mars. And by the August 21st eclipse, sun and moon are eight degrees past Mars. Now, there's something we call orb, like range of influence. And astrologers argue about, oh, you know, how close do two planets need to be to the connection that they're making for it to have kind of an oomph. And of course, one or two is way close. Even under five is pretty close. When we get over five, and especially up by eight, it's probably stronger when it's the sun and moon involved than if it's just all the other planets. Now, Mars is the planet most having to do with action, energy, in our bodies. It rules our muscles. It's sort of like our motor. And it's also related to being proactive, caring about what happens to you. 
taking care of numero uno. It's fight or flight, survival. It also rules the adrenal glands in the body. And it has a lot to do with aggression. If you think of the word martial, like in martial arts or martial law, it comes from the word for Mars, and Mars was the god of war. So there is something about fights or let's just say even conflict or certainly competition. All of those things are very strong pretty much for everybody at this point in time with these summer months, especially for people in leadership positions because the sun part of the sun-Mars combo rules leaders. If you think of the sun in our solar system, it's the center. It's kind of a kingly energy. If you think of how it rules the sign Leo and lion is the king of the jungle. So when you think about <clears throat> the impact of Mars for the summer, it might even for you personally have to do with things where you're trying to take leadership. Or it's also the sun, a planet of, we call it a planet, it's, we know it's a star, uh, of creativity. And so things that you're trying to be creative with, this is a good summer for you to take the lead, initiate, start something new, particularly around that time when we have the July 23rd new moon that's so, so close to Mars. And that's actually at zero of Leo, which is pretty interesting because when we get to the next new moon on the 21st of August, it's also in Leo. It's at almost 29. Now this happens because a month is usually 30 days or more. A sign is 30 degrees. The sun pretty much moves about a degree a day. And when you have a new moon at a zero of a sign, your next new moon is going to be at the very end of that sign. So when we see two full moons in a, say, calendar month, we use the term blue moon for that, even though that's not exactly a correct from the real origin of the term, but we went into that another show. I'm not going there now. But there's no good word for, oh, two new moons in the same sign or two full moons in the same sign. But just think about this. It's sort of double Leo impact for the most of the summer, or at least say the second half of the summer and even into September. So Leo is that sign of pride and backbone. It rules both the heart and the back, well, kind of the lower back and the spine in the body. So stand up straight. Be proud of yourself. Do your best, something where you can feel like I'm accomplishing something and I'm proud of it. So that's the plus side. And on the sailors take warning side, we might say that this is a time when everybody has a short fuse. And if they're not getting what they want, because Mars is the most selfish planet and Sun comes in a close second, people are going to get testy. They'll be ready to fight, very pugilistic. I've always liked that word. And when we think about leaders, it could be leaders of countries as well as leaders of industry, leaders of groups and organizations, leaders of anything. So we'll be keeping our eye on our leader, Mr. Trump, and he happens to be born with the sign Leo rising. So this is going to be a very strong summer for him. The new moon July 23rd that's at zero Leo, it's not quite into that personal part of his chart, the first house. It's actually, I think, in his 11th. Let me see. Of course, I have his chart here somewhere. Zero Leo, the very end of the 11th. Well, it's on the cusp, the doorway of the 12th house. 12th house is an area that says, I'm not being seen clearly. It's more of a behind the scenes area, sort of like a dream area or a retreat. Maybe he'll take more time off this summer, something like that. But this is also the area that's called hidden enemies or self-undoing. Now this has to do with its relationship to Pisces and Neptune. Those are the two you know, planet and sign combination that go with this house sort of in the natural zodiac. 
And Mars goes with the first house. It's the place of the self, the strength of individuality and being different from everybody else. But Pisces and Neptune says, oh, I'm just one drop in the whole ocean. So it's more selfless. I don't know if we're going to see a more compassionate side of our president this summer or if we're going to see one who's trying to keep things hidden behind closed doors. So far, I would vote for number two by what I've seen exhibited. But he did say one good thing about that health care bill is mean. So maybe even if the Senate manages to pass some kind of mean health care bill before the July 4th recess that they're talking about wanting to do, I'm taping this on June 19th, by the way, and then, or if they take part of the House's mean health care bill, maybe somehow President Trump won't sign it. Remains to be seen. Okay, so I kind of skipped over my July full moon just a little bit. And it's kind of um, not a very strong or powerful, oh no, wait, yes it is. Haha, <laughs> I was going to say it's not such a strong full moon. Here's where it's hairy. Okay, so Pluto... We used to call it the farthest planet out. Now we know there's dwarf planets past it. But at any rate, and some people will still call Pluto a dwarf planet since it was downgraded by the astronomers. But believe me, all the astrologers are calling it a real planet. Pluto, it's slow, it's thorough, its job is to get rid of what's not working anymore, to dig up the dredges, purify things. It's sort of um, Phoenix rises from the purging of the ashes from the uh, fires of destruction. Uh, there's a whole lot of different analogies you can give to Pluto. You can even say caterpillar goes into the chrysalis. Who knows what goes on in there? Comes out the butterfly. That's a nicer looking one. But it's all about change and transformation and things can't stay the same. So when we look at the full moon degree, it's at 17 of Capricorn and Pluto is at 18. They're exactly one degree apart. I mean, down to the fraction of a degree. And that's close when we call about that orb, that range of influence. Darn close. Meanwhile, as in any full moon, the sun is exactly opposite the moon. So it's over at 17 Cancer and Mars is at 22. Well, in our natal chart of the USA, we have at 24 are Mercury. So that's pretty close to Mars. Mars is tough. Mercury is talk. So you may see with the sun leader near that, a leader who's up to more tough talk again. Don't be surprised with that. Um, now, is that also in place at the birthday? Yes. In fact, at our birthday on July 4th, that Mars at 19, almost 20, or in that 20-ish degree neighborhood, is going to be exactly across from, well, not. It's almost exactly across from Pluto at 18. Close enough. Those two together, Mars, Pluto, it can mean impatient, and it's things about, you know, not waiting for the changes to come, just kind of like blowing up, if you will. And we need to be very careful with that. Hmm. Okay, so some of the long-term, longer-term factors in place, more so in August, but coming on in July, there's two major ones. One is one of these 90-degree friction at cross-purposes called a square between Jupiter and Pluto. And we've had this before. We've lived through it twice. One of them was right around Thanksgiving of last fall, and one of them was at the end of March this spring. The third one comes up on August 4th. And this is a factor that kind of says, not only are we going through these kind of almost cataclysmic, but big changes that Pluto is pushing us towards, but they're magnified even bigger by the fact that Jupiter's the biggest planet and it magnifies anything it's in contact with. So expect big, big, changes. And when we talk about things like insurance, health care, taxes, those are all Plutonian matters. Jupiter rules legislation and legislators. So 
If I was saying, how do we read the cosmic weather on this one, probably there's a real uphill battle to get the votes that are needed to make any major changes in the healthcare system and in our tax system. But those are two giant things on the agenda. You know, they have like a little break for 4th of July from Congress. They come back for some more July, and then they take the whole month of August. I won't say off. It's supposed to be their time to be in their district and being with their people and listening to their town halls, and won't that be fun? Okay, so that's one of the big things we got going on. Uh, number two, this is a little more subtle. I think it'll be equally as important some astrologers won't probably talk about it much because it's not one of the major ways of slicing the circle into fractions that we usually consider are the positioning that has the most connection or strongest links between planets. But when we talked about how 90 degrees is very important, half of 90 is 45. That's something called a semi-square. It can be just as powerful as a square. When we're looking at planets that move around the zodiac so slowly as Neptune, which takes a hundred and I think 65 years, maybe something like that, mm -hmm. and Uranus, which takes 84, when they get into any of the connections they get into, it goes on for a while. Well, this one starts in August on the 11th. That's only one week away from that big Jupiter-Pluto thing. And in between is the full moon eclipse. You see how I'm telling you? Red sky in the morning. Then there'll be a second one of these semi-squares between Neptune and Uranus on the 7th of October. Then we get three more. They go in two in 2018 and one in 2019, May 1st. This thing goes on for 22 months, almost two years. Now, Neptune has a lot to do with empathy, charitability. It's also very related to medical profession and health care. Uranus is the alarm clock planet. It shakes things up. It rules electricity. So think about lightning striking or think about shocks or even just what powers us. So this particular combination is probably also going to play into the debate about health care in this country. It may even signal some kind of health crisis. It wouldn't be unheard of to expect that there could be outbreaks of something. Maybe it's not in our country, maybe it's somewhere else. Because these planets affect the whole world, it's not just us. So that's one we're going to be keeping our eye on. A couple of other things that are very big. The full moon eclipse, I think I wrote in Janet's Planets that it's sort of a tame one as eclipses go. And it, it is. It's almost like that calm before the storm. And the two major patterns that are in place are both with the easy connections, the third of the sky, the sixth of the sky apart. So I'm not too worried about that. The um, Saturn is in both of those patterns. And Saturn is what kind of keeps us grounded or puts the brakes on things so they don't get too crazy. But oh boy, when we get to that new moon eclipse, August 21st. Okay, when you're done watching this program or when you have a minute next and you're on the internet, I want you to go to the nasa.gov site and search around for this eclipse of August 21st, 2017. There's some very nice tools there that you can see the eclipse path, and you can even see a sort of animated motion of when that totality moves. And the path cuts right across America. In fact, the shadow area where people can see at least a partial eclipse, it covers all of North America, and I mean every inch of Mexico, some of Central America, every inch of Canada, Iceland, Greenland, all of the United States except for Alaska and Hawaii. And when an eclipse comes and its path comes through a country like that, it means major things going on for that country. So it's a new moon eclipse. It means new things coming in. And 
One of the things <clears throat> I found very fascinating, Donald Trump was born just hours before a full moon eclipse back in 1946. So I went back to see, oh, well, where was the area of visibility in the world for that full moon eclipse? You're sitting, right? Exactly the same, same, same places. All of North America into a little bit of Greenland, Iceland. All of Mexico, all of Canada. Well, we know how well he's trying to get along with our neighbors. So stuff is going on. It's sort of like he was born into a moment where things come to some kind of a head, because that's what a full moon eclipse usually does. And now here comes a period where that is totally in the spotlight. I've for a long time said this man is living kind of like a Shakespeare play. And I don't know if we're in act two or three right now, but he's risen to the top heights. From there, all you can do is fall. He's born, and I believe we talked about this before, Leo rising, final, practically the final degree. Mars very close to that, so that's why he's so fighty all the time. The fixed star Regulus. It's the heart of the lion in the constellation Leo, the brightest star in Leo. It's right at his rising point. The rising point for anybody's chart is that place that says, how do we dawn into the world? How do we show ourselves? What is our personality all about? And Regulus has as its meaning, great success. And he has a wonderful chart with all these great things called grand trines, and he's got some of the luck triangles. But Regulus means great success as long as revenge is avoided. This man does not avoid revenge. Sooner or later, that catches up with you. What is the planet that makes things catch up with you? Saturn, Lord of Kara, Saturn. At the USA birthday, Jupiter, which is an important planet in Donald's chart, is at the degree of the USA Saturn. In fact, next to Donald Trump's Jupiter, he has Chiron. Chiron is an asteroid known as the Wounded Healer. It shows where our weak link is. His weak link is hyperbole, exaggeration. Everything's huge. Everything's the greatest. Everything's a disaster. There's no middle ground for this man. So when he goes up, he's going all the way up. When he comes down, he's coming all the way down. I don't know exactly when that's happening. Sometime after the eclipse, most astrologers are predicting something major to happen with this eclipse. And I would also say that in... Um, Saturn's current movement, it's coming to the degree of Donald's moon. Moon is emotions. It's also nationality. It's your feeling of wanting to take care of your country. But this is right across from the USA's Mars. In fact, Trump's birth son is with our Mars. So he becomes the leader of our assertiveness, our aggression. Well, he says, yes, make America great again. Yes, put America first. But how he's doing that is picking fights with certain people. But you notice, not Russia. OK, if you take his chart and make it as if he was born in Moscow, as if he's born in Moscow, then a grouping of his planets is all in the area called the Eighth House. The Eighth House, it's Pluto's turf. It does have to do with other people's money finances, investments. We even know from Junior that the Trump Organization has had an influx of money from Russia historically. We don't know how much recently. But this is one of the things that um, Special Counsel Mueller is looking into, and I think that we're going to be finding out a lot more about it. And let's see. In Putin's chart, he has something called the Part of Fortune, which is a lucky kind of spot, together with the dwarf planet Ceres, named for the goddess of harvest. And it has to do sort of with cornucopia. Well, he's been very lucky with money things in his country, basically, because he, you know, steals it from all his people. And this is right where in Trump's chart, we have something um, called the North Node, which means sort of his magnetic 
north that he goes towards with Uranus, which means unusual. Um, now that Uranus, oh yes, that's being amplified by Jupiter. There was some, um, anyway, things are going to come out. Secrets can't be hidden forever. We know that. That's been going on for a long time. Why anybody tries to keep a secret anymore, I have no idea. But all the secrets are going to come out. Okay, so let's see. Saturn has been going backwards. It reaches the end of its backward motion and looks like it stops still, called the station, on August 25th. That's four days after the eclipse. The degree where it stops at is 21 Sagittarius right across from the USA Mars with Donald's sun, right on Donald's moon. So it's something that shows very strongly for his personal journey. And it's kind of like, to me, Saturn the tester. Saturn the, well, teacher too, but the karma planet. The buck stops here. Sooner or later, we're going to find out where everything stems back to. And I'm here to tell you, it's going to be the Oval Office. Okay, so let's see. Donald Trump's son. Oh, no, Putin. Putin's son is at the degree of Donald Trump's Chiron. So something about Putin is part of this weak link in Donald Trump's chart. And Putin's Saturn, where he can put the brakes on, or he wants to be the boss, or he wants to be the top dog, that's a Donald Trump's Jupiter. Very strong connections between their charts. So even though they say they hardly know each other, I think we're going to find out there's more contact between them than we have suggested. So let's see if there's something else here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So Trump's... Chiron, which is where Putin's sun is, those are at the 90 degree cross purposes to the USA natal sun. So I don't think that this man in the presidency is going to be doing good things for the presidency as a station or as the reputation of our country. And I'm sure you can tell from what I've talked about on prior shows, I'm not a fan of Trump. I still don't really want to see him crash and burn the way I think he is going to. But if that's what it takes, it takes what it takes. So meanwhile, for you, I'd suggest seeing to your own life, making sure you have things as under control or squared away and doing the things that are your creative from your heart, the good positive sun Mars kinds of things, and you know, keep your nose clean. Saturn likes that, and you'll probably fare the wild seas of August particularly okay. But do remember that our summer forecast says sailors take warning, it's the red sky in the morning. And we'll talk again in September on Looking Up. Yeah.